I lived in St. Thomas from the age of two years old until I was 16, and then we moved. Well, it was a very busy dock area. All the ships used to come in with bananas and coal and all that very, very busy dock. But you could go down the docks and nobody would say a word to you to safe. But in those days, I went to St. Thomas School until I was 14. Then when I came out, a crowd of us went to look for jobs. And there was jobs in Weaver's Flour Mill, Elba, Tinworks, because they were making candy cans for the army. And uh, that was all the work there was. But I managed to get in a photographer shop and uh, 10 shillings a week. There was a boy there and he used to go around every tea time to collect all the photographs that were to develop him from the chemist shops. And that's what we did, developed them, cut them, and already then for the chemist shops. We had a wonderful boss from Cardiff, he was a lovely man. And he used to, um, we had a machine, it was like a flat machine, and you trimmed all the edges to make it straight, see? And some of the scenes were terrible, my mother was taking photos of. <laughs> what people was taking on beaches or anywhere, party, you know, like a man who should take a photo. Not many people had a camera those days. But they was quite busy there from all the chemist shops, far as the members. They used to go see and fetch them. But um, it was a nice, interesting job. Well, it closed up. And then, what age was I? And then I went into a medical um, warehouse where I used to do all the um, injections for the hospitals, put them all up, all what they wanted. And every so often we had a squad come in to check, you know, if the drugs were all there. And that was nice too. I was a Cardiff firm over on um, Comedy Estate. I worked in the Empire. I was in the Empire Theatre working. And then my husband and myself, we were both 18 and we were called up for the forces. I was going to the Wrens. And because my cousins were going to, uh, to the Land Army, but I was uh, caught by telling a lie. But I, they asked her if I spoke Welsh. Well, only fluent, I understood. So, of course, I was up in Aberystwyth. But they were down the Gower. I had to go back and tell them then, and I didn't want to. Down in the YMCA, that was a recruiting place, see? And I had to go back and tell them then that I didn't want to go to the Rennes. I wanted to go to the Land Army. Well, I was up in Aberystwyth for about 18 months, I think. And then you could only come home and you had a voucher like to come home to travel. But then I asked if I could have a transfer nearer my home because my mother wasn't in a good health. So I went to St. Clair's then. And then I was married when I was 21, but still in the army, mine, you still had to be in the army, you see. And my husband was abroad all the time. He was with the Royal Engineers. And he, would, he had a nasty job. He, did. he fought for the army, he boxed, and he caught. He had a lot of trophies for the army, a lot of trophies. But he was with the Canadians. They were, the Germans were blowing up the bridges, not for the troops to get over. And they had to put the Bailey bridges up. And quite a lot of them drowned, they fell off the bridge into the rivers. I was in a hostel, in a hostel. There was girls there from Bath, from Manchester. All A lot of English girls were there, they were quite nice. And we had a warden. The warden, she was pretty strict, mind, but she was good. And then we had uh, plenty of good solid food. And then we used to have like a packed lunch to go off to the farm. And then I drove the tractor in for... They went to potatoes, the main thing, you know, the trough, the trenches, but to plant that the girls would come behind 
and plant the potatoes. And we planted one field one day of cabbage. When we got up in the morning, there wasn't a cabbage left. The crows had eaten it all. But that that was my main. Then we were sent then, I was sent for rat catching. We used to put the parrot down the hole and I don't know how much good of that. I didn't like that. But <laughs> and then thatching. I've been on thatching, you know, the houses that have got thatched roofs. We were taught that to do that. And then haymaking was a lot different than today. Everything was done by hand. You had to get on top of the machine. Two girls had to get on top of the machine. And they would put the, what they call them, the stacks of hay, shafts or something in it. You had to feed them into the tunnel, like, on this machine, old-fashioned. And then there was two bags underneath to catch the grain. And they were tired, but today everything is done by machinery. They don't have any of that now. We used to get up, I think it was round about um, half a seven. And then you went into the big dining room to have your breakfast. And then they put you a lunch. But sometimes the farmers would give you a lunch, you know, really nice it was. And then um, I was quite happy, very happy in the Land Army. But um, the Lord used to come and pick us up in the morning, and they'd be a, it would be full of the land girls going off. See, I think I travelled in everything American cheap, anything that was going into the village. We asked them a lift, even the vicar gave us a lift one day. But it is very interesting. But then um, I was expecting my first child, so that's when I finished that after three years. Well, my husband was still away fighting the war, so uh, he didn't see my baby till she was about 12 months old, he was, before his father seen him, he had leave to come home. And he, they brought him over then for a D-Day, B-Day in a victory. That's how I felt, felt for Roger, victory. <laughs> the Yanks were stationed nearest. Now, the Yanks were very well provided for. They used to have ENSA concerts, dances, and they were always inviting the land girls to go there in the village. You know, Jorina, there was nothing in St. Clair's then, mind. It was just the village with houses in it. Today, the shops there, but there was nothing in it then. And then we used to go to a farm in Larn over the bridge. And then there was another farm we went to, Red Roses. The farmers were very nice, very, very nice people. They treated you nicely, you know. But um, we had a nice outfit, nice thick jumper, a tie, um, two pairs of jumpers, a corduroy one for best, and then the other one then for working. And we had dungarees, two pairs of dungarees you wore for work, the dungarees. Pair of nice big stout shoes, nice big overcoat, good stuff in it, and a nice like sort of trilby hat. And um, we were well catered for already. We worked hard, mine, very hard. Sometimes we'd come in after the after haymaking was the hardest of all. That really was hard because we didn't stop for that, you know. But um, the majority of the farmers were very nice and, uh, you know, they were nice. I got nothing to complain of. And then the lorry would come to pick us up. And when we got back to the hostel, then we'd have a wash. We had showers there and all that. And then we had our evening meal, which was always very nice. And they used to make um, a nice dinner. But what was that pudding? No, not rice pudding. That's how you were. But none of them liked that. So I used to have second egg pins. I liked it. <laughs> When I finished in the Land Army and I came back to Swansea, I seen a very big difference. Where well, we hadn't been in long when they dropped a, a bomb in the terrace be, behind, in front of me, Mackwood Terrace. So we all had to go from the houses for three weeks. But as it turned out, it was wonderful. It was, well, God was working. This bomb was full of sawdust. Well, they had sabotaged it, the Jews and that, they had to do in the bombs. But um, 
it was a big difference when I came back. When I think of it, we were really sheltered out there in the country and they didn't go far short of anything. Whereas home, I used to collect all the girls' rations of sugar I had to send home to my dad because he loved his sugar and his tea. So we used to collect it all and send it home to him. It was a awful lot of the, the damage on the Oxford Street and it did. I street and it did. And my mother and I went out one day and the soldiers were bigging up a bomb that hadn't gone off in Castle Square. By the night time, my mother never got over it. She cried all that day. All those lovely boys were blown up. Because the bomb had gone off, they were defusing it. And it was so sad. But that happened in Castle Square. And I, a lot of damage was done to Swansea. A terrible lot of damage was done to Swansea. But I seen a big difference, I did. When my husband came home from the war, then they shipped them all over for D-Day from Germany, I think it was, or somewhere. But the French weren't nice to our troops. The, my husband said they wouldn't give him a glass of water. And he was with the engineer. They wouldn't give him a glass of water. In fact, he said they were treated better by the Germans than they were treated with the French, which they never have liked us. He, he went through a lot building a Brady Bridge. You see, mates of his drowning. Couldn't save him because the depth of the bridge, you see, that the, was being put up. But if they hadn't put the Bailey bridges up, our troops couldn't have gone through. It was the Canadians who were doing that, putting the bridges up and the engineers. Mm. Yeah. When the war ended, yes, when my husband had a job then as a welder, and we just carried on from there. My father, oh, he was the loveliest man that ever walked, beautiful man he was. Well, he worked in the copper works and he had, he was the engine driver for the one engine that used to take the copper down to the wharf, you know, to the, to where the boat was waiting to take the copper abroad because we were the only copper works, really, best one. And my mother said he'd take her best blouse to shine that engine, the rose it was. He used to keep it beautiful, he did. And I had a little photo, I can't find it, with his cap on and that. And he had to, we lived in St. Thomas then, I don't remember the River Towie. He had to go over to get to his job in the Harvard on the Penny Ferry. He used to catch that Penny Ferry over to the Harvard. And that, uh, that was my dad. But uh, he had a lovely man under him, like a fireman or something in it. And he was from Oxford Street. And they got on very, very good. But he loved his engine, the rose. I think he loved them better than his family. <laughs> <laughs> he did. I think 